What happens when the power goes out? The lights go out and the music stops. A lot of things stop. I mean, think about it. We depend on electrical power for just about everything. But we're so used to it just being there that we don't stop to think about where it comes from or who brings it to us. Well, maybe we should. So where does our power come from? The ground, the air, solar energy, mostly. It's kind of like an invisible force. It doesn't just come out of the air. No, our power doesn't just come out of the air or out of the ground. Here in the Northwest, a lot of it is generated by hydro dams like this one, but it also comes from coal plants, gas, biomass, and wind farms. And it's delivered to us by the men and women who operate these dams, the linemen who build the transmission and distribution lines, the mechanics, the electricians and operators in the substations, the technicians at the wind farms, and a lot of other professionals we may not even think about, like marketers, estimators, office workers, and customer service reps. And with the formation of Homeland Security at the national level, security guards at dams, substations, and power lines now play an important role. They not only provide security, but notify the appropriate authorities if something isn't working properly. These are the men and women who make up the electrical utilities industry. And you know what? It's an industry you might want to take a good look at. This is a control room for uh, Mayfield Dam. We supply power for the city of Tacoma. Without us, the city of Tacoma wouldn't have any lights. The utility worker does very many different things in even one day. Uh, I enjoy climbing. Uh, if you're afraid of heights, it's probably not your thing, but uh, how you get up there on a 45-foot pole, and it's definitely a little different. The things about uh, working a major outage or a major storm is uh, the satisfaction of uh, being able to get people back into power. I'll be stationed here for at least the next 30 years, I hope, uh, and I look forward to seeing this project uh, producing some excellent energy for Puget Sound Energy, some renewable energy. You know, if you talk to people in this industry, they'll tell you that these are really good jobs. Okay, but what makes them such good jobs? Entry-level positions in the utility and energy industry. Starting wage ranges from $15 to $30 an hour. They're at home, they're here, and they're jobs that aren't going to go away. Well, I guess for me it's a chance to have a, a good, well-paying job and, and still be, you know, out in the country where I grew up. You know, as a career, it's, it's a good place to be because you have, you have the security of knowing that uh, power is going to be needed. I think this is a good career. It's fun. It's exciting. There's lots of challenges. There's lots of new technology we get to play with. Something new every day. Marcy Putnam is business representative for the IBEW. Her union represents 3,500 electrical workers throughout the Northwest. Local 125 represents men and women who work as linemen, estimators, dispatchers, wiremen. We have police officers and administrative personnel as well as other classifications such as equipment operators and mechanics. The local union is responsible for maintaining and protecting the wages, hours, and working conditions for our members. So, interesting work, important jobs, good pay, good benefits, job security, it all adds up to a great career, but how do you get started? Terry Pablo is the Career and Technical Educational Coordinator for North Thurston Public Schools. Well, the Power and Energy program at River Ridge High School has been around for 15 years. Very innovative and giving the students an opportunity to have applied physics and applied uh, mathematics and uh, really look at an industry which is around but nobody really pays attention to. And so we've had a very um, innovative instructor who started what was called the River Ridge Electric Vehicle Club and they designed cars, they manufactured them by hand and then raced them. It's a lot of fun. You get to do some hands-on learning, you know, roll with the guys. It, it is a lot of fun. I'm hoping to get into an apprenticeship after high school and go that route. Look at your interests, but at the same time, get involved. Do some kind of activity that's outside of the classroom. Find your passion and go try something. Go do it. Centralia College in Centralia, Washington. Rulin Crawford is a professor at the college's Center of Excellence for Energy Technology. 
The Center of Excellence here at Centralia College is chartered by the state of Washington to offer training in energy technology and power production and operations. And we do that across the state. Mainly our classes are done through an ITV system through schools like Wenatchee Valley College, Peninsula College, Grace Harbor Community College. The first year we're pretty much studying Ohm's Law, Watt's Law, how electricity is generated, how it's distributed, the power grid itself, and all the pretty much just the fundamentals of electricity. Then the second year is more plant specific. We start talking about uh, specifically hydro, uh, uh, thermal operations, uh, boilers, and things of that nature so that they understand then the kinds of energy that are produced and, and how to do it. It takes a lot of training prior to getting into an entry level position even within the energy industry. So the training that's happening in the community college system is really helping that. We're reaching down into the high schools and working with many high schools now in the state to develop energy programs that then feed into the community college programs. There are so many different worlds now that haven't been available to us before. Uh, wind being one of them, uh, solar technology, uh, even geothermal or tidal or wave action. These are industries now and, and technologies that we haven't had before. They're going to have huge opportunities for a student who would uh, want to look seriously at doing those kinds of jobs. The Pacific Northwest is really leading the nation in green economy jobs and green economy training for those jobs. I was uh, going to college and they had a program here that uh, allowed me to work during my uh, vacations and I really enjoyed being around the uh, industry and so I took the next job that came open. I started out at the bottom there and then you work your way up uh, through groundman and then into your apprenticeship. When a student decides to, uh, to go to work and assuming that they choose one of the trades, that would be uh, power production, a technician, a substation operator, or a plant operator, uh, typically those are involved with the unions. They'll go into a, an apprenticeship program. The apprenticeship program can be either two or three years, depending on what particular the company they, they uh, choose and then they'll uh, do that program for, for two or three years and then become a journeyman, which then allows them to, uh, to work on their own, basically. In our environment, in the electric utility industry, there's gonna be vast opportunities coming forward. There's still gonna be a need for mechanics and coal plants. There's a need for linemen to build transmission lines. There have to be hydro operators. There's wind technicians. There are interests for whether you wanna work outside, if you wanna work on computers, whatever your interest is, there's probably a job for you in the electric utility industry. So there are a lot of different opportunities out there for all kinds of careers in energy and a lot of ways to get there. High school courses, college programs, apprenticeships where you earn while you learn, you name it. And a lot of new careers are out there in new technologies like wind, solar, and biomass. And these jobs aren't going away. As long as we need power, we're going to need the people who bring it to us. And hey, that could be you.